What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode five of the Kick and Bass podcast. This week, we have two new faces. We have Zenlo in the top right, and we have Staria in the bottom, no, top left, bottom right. We have Staria, at least on my screen. Um, so yeah, they are the new coaches at Kick and Bass, and this is their first uh, Kick and Bass podcast. And today, we are going to be talking about networking. It's a topic that gets brought up a lot um, in the music industry. And honestly, this industry is really all about the people that you know. The longer you're in it, you kind of realize that a little bit more. So we're going to be talking about, you know, who are the people that you want to be networking with as an upcoming artist and DJ and producer, um, tips and tricks to actually go and do that networking, you know, stories from our careers as well. But yeah, let's get right into it. So um, for me, networking is like one of those weird topics because I feel like everyone's always like, oh, go network, go do this. But it doesn't really have like a definition to it. It's kind of like vague, like what that actually means. Um, you know, it kind of, I feel like it comes from like this more corporate world where people are like, you know, you have like a business meeting, like you have like a cocktail hour and you go and like hand business cards and stuff. But like, I feel like in the music industry, it's totally different. So, you know, for you guys, like what in your career is what, what has like networking like meant to you? uh i guess for me i would say it's just like making friends just that's to think of yeah. it like that rather than like networking just like make homies become like just talk to people like uh the easiest way to meet people in the music industry is go to music events and yeah. just talk to people like i didn't have any friends when i moved to la and i know more people now than i did when i lived in utah but, like you just talk to people and then people meet you introduce and you just hang out where you want to meet people yeah <laughs> what, so, so when you moved to LA you pretty much didn't know anyone like how did you find out like where you know what were those events that you wanted to go to was it you know through people you met online before that you knew lived in LA or did you just kind of like you know find some parties that were happening in LA and you were going to them or it took me a while to be honest um so my first year in LA um I was just focusing on my job um trying to get that all learning and uh, get my life sustained yeah. uh, so I kind of was like just worrying about that it was still audio related so I was like okay I'm still working I guess but it, it wasn't until like after like six months to a year where I finally figured out there's this um, party called brownies and lemonade and I was like but this is like mostly trap and at the time they're doing kind of yeah mostly trap and then my friend was like that I had met he was like oh there's actually this other one that's more housey that's called space yacht and this is when space yacht was just starting in like 2016 uh, and I was like, okay, so we went on a Tuesday night to this like tiny little venue that was like maybe maybe 1500 square feet. It's tiny wow, bar, yeah. like 150 capacity and it would pack every time, every Tuesday night. And there was just all these huge artists like Jaws and like, okay. And uh, Joyride, all, Joyride was just popping off right then. So it came a few times and you got overwhelmed, but like, cause it was so small, you couldn't hide there. Yeah. So I, like it was good. So you just like went there. And I I met London Bridge. I just went every Tuesday. I just I was so, awkward. I just stood around and people recognized me and like, dude, you make music, yeah. And it just so there's a consistency to it. Like if you yeah. you know if there's something that's like a weekly party in your city that like you know is always gonna be there. Like you kind of become like almost like a local in that. You know, like you're like a regular pretty much. So it's like you know even if you are more awkward or like you know not the most extroverted person just the fact that like people are seeing you week after week can be like super helpful to just you know start a conversation or meet someone yeah, and I didn't even drink alcohol I was sober at the time yeah so like I well, I only knew, like thing. London Bridge too and like yeah. you just like he you could ask him he still remembers those days of, like oh Zenlo is always there no matter yeah. what genre if it was dubstep and I wasn't feeling it, I'd just go say what's up talk to him and Henry and then dip but yeah. they saw I was there and I was supporting them and they don't know I dipped you know, it's just and, as Irish guy. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to focus too much on this, but you know, what, what that relationship, like, how has that helped you later on in your career of like going to that space yacht party like week after week? So they didn't book me till like 2018, uh, as like Halloween, but I never asked because um, I was sending music to London Bridge, but he was like politely being like, "This is good," you know. But you could tell like he wasn't like stoked on it. He was yeah. if he would was like, "Oh, dude, you're the next thing." I would have been booked, but he wasn't booking me. So I was like, okay. 
so I kind of just kept popping up and waiting until they booked me on Halloween and uh, I think it was actually it's 2017 when they booked me so I was going for like a year consistently before they booked me but from there everyone in like Orange County LA they, I just started getting booked everywhere because of Space Shot they were booking me consistently like every other month and so, so it, people started yeah. seeing my name like you you started seeing me pop up uh, that was just because of Space Shot they just kept pushing me and then yeah. other artists like Jay War and like others that were playing were like starting to support me. So you kind of like get into the scene and that's how I feel like a lot of people like start getting their first bookings is like through, you know, going to a party and like kind of befriending, you know, so like in this case, like London Bridge is like, you know, he, he plays a lot of roles, but he's kind of one of the owners of Space Yacht, but it's like a party. So it's like, that's like the promoter and that's the people that are going to decide, you know, who are the support acts for a party, um, you know, who are the DJs going to be for a party? So like, those are definitely the people that you want to kind of befriend and <clears throat> get to know because they're kind of like the gatekeepers for who's yeah, getting That's kind of the position party. I'm in in Italy, actually. Yeah. yeah. With, with my party, because I'm also a promoter. Uh, I yeah. DJ, I, promote, I make music and I promote parties. So that's also what, what I'm trying to do myself. I'm trying to create like uh, a place where people can network, where people like, where all Italian artists can come and network with each other and get to meet each other and possibly play out their music and have a spot to, to like push their stuff. I mean, uh, I don't know if that's the expression, but <laughs> no, it's like a community, yeah. you know. I yeah, yeah. Like Creating the community, I think, is the most powerful thing, and it's really great, like both for an artist and a promoter, because if you have a strong community as a promoter, it's gonna come back. So, yeah. Just wanted, to, just wanted to say this. Sorry. I think it's you? really important. Yeah. I was just gonna say, like, what what you were saying about just like going and showing up, and. I think it's important to like, not like, just be nice to everybody that you meet. Like you might think, okay, I'm going to go to this party every month and I'm going to talk to the promoter every time. Or I'm going to talk to like the guys who are throwing it every time. And then they'll get to know me. It's like better to just go and just like relax a little bit because they'll notice if you're like a little bit too thirsty and it's just way better to just hang out and talk to the person who's at, who's running the list, you know, like just like talk to everybody and see who, who you get along with and like, don't be too like, Oh, I have to go and I have to stand next to the stage and wait for the guy who's throwing the party to finish his set until he comes off so that then I can say hi to him. Like they're, they'll, it'll feel a little bit awkward <laughs> if you do, if you approach it like that, I think it's good to approach it in like, what can I give and what can I like, provide and and um what value can i provide versus like what can you do for me is always a good way to think about networking um like for instance you could go to a party that you don't really know anyone at but you just really like the vibes of the party and you could take videos of all the areas of the party and make a little like recap video and then send it to them and they'll be like oh my god you just like made us this video that we can post or something you know like what is it that you can that's yeah, a really yeah i love that idea as well because um you know a lot of times like let's say you're at like a event like it could be a festival a club and you know you are backstage for example like you know i didn't think about that but instead of just like hanging around like kind of like you know not really doing anything like you know taking a video for whoever is djing and then like going on social media later and like sending it to them like you know djs are always like want to have extra content and things to post oh, yeah. especially if it's like you know you can send it to the promoter as well i think that's like a really great idea and i think you're totally right like you don't you know this kind of goes back to what taylor said but it's really all about like having like a genuine friendship like you know i used to be guilty of this but you know if you meet someone that ha holds a position of power in the music industry. Let's say they're another DJ or promoter. You know, it's not like a job interview where you want to be talking about like all the things you've done and who you opened up for and like accomplished. Because like when when someone hears that, they're gonna just be like, "Oh, this person's trying to get something from me or like impress me." And you can kind of like read that fakeness a little bit. I think you know if you can just make a genuine friendship and be helpful and, you know, be a positive person. Like the easiest thing you can do is just be nice to everyone, like universally nice. Um, you know, if you're, if you're an asshole in this industry, it comes back to bite you like real quick. So I think, yeah, just being nice, not asking too much is like a great way to kind of, you know, at these events, handle yourself. And it was funny how you said like befriend like the ticket person or the door person, because that's actually a really good person to know because 
if you have yeah. like a hookup for guest list, then, you know, you can go to more of these events. You know, sometimes you don't want to pay a full ticket price, but like if you can get, um, you know, free entry, then you, you know, there's more people you could possibly meet and you, you know, become a regular, blah, blah, blah. So finding the people that run guest lists is definitely someone to know. Yeah, I've seen this meme pop up lately about the resident DJ and the security and the security guy and they're like super yeah. bro. That's the most important thing you have to do. Security if you want to be a DJ. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you have to be their friend. The, the bartender <laughs> is like everyone, you know. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> and those are the people that are like close to the like the people that are doing really well. Like let's say you go to like Space Yacht now. It's like they're doing really well. And now they're used to people just like kissing their ass all the time. So if you go to Space Yacht and you're like, all I want to do is meet the promoter and talk to the promoter and talk to the main like dudes who are doing it, you're probably not gonna like have much success in whatever you're trying to do. But if you talk to their friends if you talk to other people at the party and you just like created a good vibe with those people eventually those are probably the people that'll help you out anyways like because the people that have already been successful at the point where you're ready to start like being more in the scene and getting booked and stuff it's probably going to be the next kind of generation of people and those are the people that are like kind of hooked in but maybe they haven't you know maybe one person who's helping out the guys at Space Yacht, you know, in a couple of years, they're going to just go work for Insomniac or something like yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. And I think that that's really important to just like, just make a good impression and find the people that you actually vibe with. And it is if it's not like the main people, like maybe you just get get along really well with like some other guy who goes to the party every week. Like the photographer. Chances are you know? that guy's going to start a party. You know, so you don't really yeah. know what happens. So it's just good to like be genuine and like, I will, yeah. I will clarify, uh, when I started going to Space Yacht, like when I met London Bridge, he had de he was DJing to a room of, there was 15 of us in that room. And so when he finished his set, I didn't know who he was. I just was like, yo, I like that Wood Holly track he played. And he's like, oh dude, the, uh, what's that one? Is like, Ass Out by Wood Holly. Yeah, and old old one. I was like, dude, that song's so good. He's like, dude, I love that song. So we just started talking like that and then, and he was like, do you make music too? I was like, yeah. He's like, yo, send me music. And he's like, I actually throw these parties. So like, that's how we met. It was not <laughs> me sucking ass. It was literally just like giving a compliment. Yeah. And that's, I think the best way to meet people is just ass. notice, <laughs> notice something, give them a compliment, talk to, like you would a normal person. Like, yeah. just yeah. Talk, like, no one wants to talk about how cool they are. Everyone talks yeah. about what they ate that night. And like, holy shit. Like, what is going on in the world right now? Like, people want to just talk about normal shit and be like, you're cool. You're funny. Let's link up sometime or whatever i do this it's like just be normal like don't yeah yeah you don't need to be a salesman like if yeah. you're a salesman nobody is gonna buy anything yeah. <laughs> that's the thing and when you're meeting people i think uh, one, one thing Saria said yeah, it's really important i think who who introduces you to people so that's if you're not the one going up to them but someone's like feels like introducing you to a certain person because it thinks that you're gonna vibe with that person that that's really important i think because it creates a stronger connection already by association i think yeah i think you know and, and you would be surprised how like interconnected people are like it it seems like the, like especially in electronic music or house music or whatever it is you know it seems like this huge like space but once you're kind of in it you realize that it's a lot smaller than you think it is and like kind of everyone like knows each other so you know, having a connection to this person can kind of like open up doors over here. Um, and yeah, I think what Taylor is saying is like great, like an example of like some, a specific thing you can do, you know, when you're at a festival or, you know, if you see an artist is like music is just like the kind of common denominator between, you know, all of us is like, we all are here because we love the music and especially like a DJ, you know, if you recognize the song they play and you're like, oh, that song's a banger. I love that one too. Or, you know, even like something that you don't recognize, like that can be a good conversation starter is like, oh, I heard you play one with like this vocal, like, what is that? That was so sick. Um, I've definitely used that one a lot to kind of like nerd out with other DJs and producers and, you know, and then you can see where the conversation goes from there and, and you know, take it. But um, I think these are all like really amazing kind of like tips and tricks. Like, have you guys ever kind of gone out of your way to like network like you know gone to a festival out of state and done something like that or you know because like I think we've only been talking about meeting people kind of in your local scene which is like the most accessible but um yeah just would love to hear like any other kind of like stories on 
networking. As a DJ uh, or as a party goer, how? Like, as uh, like for your like artist career, yeah, as like a DJ producer kind of. He wants to go. I started last time. <laughs> I'll go. I can go. Uh, you go. I played a festival a couple of months ago, uh, like a minor stage with a few people. But then yeah. I, I had I had my wristband for the whole the whole three days of the festival. So I basically spent my three days there just meeting people and chatting up. And so you you gotta you gotta pick up on your your occasions for to do that. I think and yeah, I made I made some good connections there and it's cool or maybe uh a few months back when i i saw tyler was playing in barcelona i was like okay cool let's go <laughs> and yeah. i just went there i met him and yeah we spent the day together and we went to a party and it was cool and it was nothing like i had to get something from it i just wanted to to be like yo what's up exactly, <laughs> we, we yeah. know each other let's meet in person yeah so like i think festivals are great because you know a lot of times you know, you may get an, you know, if you're kind of starting to get to that level where you have an opportunity to play at a festival, it doesn't really matter what festival it is, but, you know, even if like, let's say they're not paying you anything or they're paying you very little, but, you know, you know that being at that festival, maybe your favorite artist is playing on day three and you want to stay and like, you know, possibly meet them or, you know, meet some other local guys that are playing the festival, like that can be a great opportunity. Um, and I think it's something that often is like a, sore subject in the industry because a lot of times people you know they get really upset it's a kind of separate conversation about you know not paying djs or paying them like a small amount to do something but for me i've always viewed it personally as like if i can get something out of this like strengthen a relationship with someone or i can um make a new connection like to me that's sometimes worth more than like 500 dollars to get uh, a booking you know what i mean or if like you know, I'm going to have a better connection by doing this thing and like strengthen that relationship, you know, and do this favor for someone by playing the set like that can be really powerful. Um, so I don't yeah, it just kind of reminded me what you said, Hater. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't saying anything. <laughs> it's hard. I, that just people, remind you know, <laughs> that reminded me of a story of like, if you're trying to decide whether you want to do something like there was a time, uh, like, I'm like a little bit less stressed about this now, but there was a time where I was just, I didn't have a lot of music out or like, I didn't even have, like, I was at a point in my production journey where I was like, I just really need to spend all my time in the studio and I should not go to Burning Man. <laughs> and I decided to go to Burning Man that year. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the week that I could be spending in the studio and I'm going to go to Burning Man and whatever, I'm just going to do it. And I was very nervous about going because I was like, I don't want to just like go on vacation right now. I have so much work to do. And I ended up going and just like, just meeting a few people and like kind of bonding with them in this. The thing with festivals is like, and Burning Man especially, it's like when you're in that situation, whoever you're with, you're kind of in like a survival mode type of situation whereas if you just go out to the club in your hometown or a party you meet people it's like whatever whatever if you meet someone at burning man and suddenly you're stranded with them in the middle of the desert and you have to figure out how to get the hell back to wherever or even a festival and you're at glastonbury you're like what the hell is going on you're like gonna have a way stronger relationship with that person in that situation versus like meeting someone at a club you might even not even remember them again but that happened to me at burning man and i like met this woman who has now become one of my very close friends and a client of mine who has hired me multiple times to dj her events and it's just like sometimes if you just just go with it and like go to the festival and don't even worry about playing it and like getting the gigs there or whatever and you just meet people like that's that to me is like pure networking because then yeah. you also have like a good friendship and you're not, you don't really have an intention. It's just like, I'm just going to be there. And I'm going to take advantage of whatever the situation is and, and whatever connections happen in that. But also I wanted to say just like some very general networking advice, like one, introduce yourself as what you want to be. Like if you are a DJ or a producer and maybe you don't feel, you feel a little bit like um, imposter syndrome about saying that, who cares? Just say it. Like, Maybe you work at Starbucks, but you're a producer. Just say, I'm a producer, you know? And also like, don't focus on it, on any of the negative things. Like 
don't be like i'm a young producer who like has never put anything out but i'm a producer like only focus on positive things like in general don't like just don't say anything negative at all like don't don't hate on someone else don't hate on yourself like just be positive and like introduce yourself how you want people to know you yeah i think that that is super important because i i see people do that to me all the time they're like oh i just started producing this is like my first track and like i get it like the context you know and sometimes it makes sense but you know that i think people start to think that the kind of like self deprecating is like a good thing or you know it it just kind of like taints the way you can see someone you know they always say like your what is it first impressions like the most important right so i think you know really believing that this is like your identity and like this is how i'm going to put myself out there can be super important um and i love what you said about festivals because it just kind of reminds me of like you know if you're in like a weird situation or sometimes those are like the most memorable you know sometimes like going to that after party and like something crazy happened or it was like a crazy long night and you know you're woke up in the sunrise and you know like those kind of like moments are more memorable than just like talking behind the bar at like a nightclub so you know a lot of times like festivals those are like the best places because the, the other thing of the festival is that a lot of times that's where like everyone's getting together for one event so like you know edc is a good example of that in america um it's like the biggest electronic music festival it's like i don't know 150,000 people a day and like every dj is like playing it right so it's like if you can go there you know you're going to see djs walking around you're going to see djs after their set if you can get like an artist band you can see them in the you know they have a whole area where everyone can like network so those are the places where you're going to get the most bang for your buck so even if it is like a thousand dollars for the flight or, or whatever you know you're going to get so many connections out from from something like that that can kind of you can use later in your career yeah and not only connections that will directly help you but like this is kind of a funny way but like fan connections too like if you're making music and you're putting music out and you're at a place that's full of music fans and you just meet as many people as you possibly can follow them on Instagram, have them follow you back and then continue like liking their posts later on. Like those are the people that are going to be your first fans. And those might be the people that come to your first shows and that, you know, support your first releases. And like those people in some ways are going to be more important you know, than like some promoter who maybe will book you in four years. <laughs> it's more of like a genuine kind of relationship. And like, I, as you know, I've been producing for a while now. And like, I know fans that were fans of me when I had like a hundred followers and they're still fans of me now. And like, they'll buy my merch and they'll, you know, do things. You know, They're more like dedicated fan. They'll talk, they'll send my music to their friends. Like those can be like super valuable people. It's not, you're right. It's not just like other industry people. Yeah, I think um, also just like um, not doing surface level conversations with people that um, like when you're networking too, like that's why the after parties are always good. Um, Like even though I was sober, um, I still I'm like pretty much sober. I just I drink and I smoke weed now. But like basically I'll still go to after parties here and there. Yeah, basically, like, I would still, like, go to parties, but, like, I'd be sober, and people are like, what are you doing? And it's just, like, we're hanging out. Like, I was, I remember driving Lucati around, and he just roasted about how bad my car was, and I was talking about how bad his music was, and it's just fun. <laughs> and, like, we were driving around to, like, just go to hang out. It's, like, that's what it is. Like, when I met Vanessa, she hadn't released some music. I hadn't released some music. Like, all these artists that have supported me so much, we met at the beginning, like, so I'll just find like, especially like the kick and bass community, like all the like up and coming producers, those are your homies. That's how like me and Weston like connected because we were like at the same level at the time we met. And we're like, yo, you know, even though we're on opposite sides of the country, we can help each other. And that's yeah. how it is. Like, and it's always a giving. It's never asking. Like, just, just, yeah, just like be normal. I think that's the authenticity, confidence and authenticity. That's it. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to be fake because it's going to come back to bite you later. If you, if you're like always putting up an act and, you know, I think we've talked so much about like physical networking, but like for me, the biggest thing has definitely been finding people like online. And I think that's the most accessible for people because not everyone lives in like New York or LA or, you know, and even in a country where like electronic music is big, like, but that doesn't really, you know, that's for me, that's not kind of an excuse to not grow your network as a producer, because we have this amazing thing called the internet and social media. Um, 
So yeah, I would love to talk about like some tips that you can do online um, to kind of meet people. And like, you know, I'll start just a little bit like my story. You know, when I was like producing, I would always like befriend other producers on Facebook. So this is maybe like five or six years ago when Facebook was still kind of like the dominant platform for social media. And I would just like add everyone. Like we had like 50 mutual friends or 30 mutual friends, it didn't matter. You know, I would kind of add them. I'd see who their producer was. I knew all these producers, like real names. You know, I would message them, like send them tracks, talk about things, like talk about life. Um, so like finding a community online, which is why kind of kick and bass is great because it kind of puts everyone in one little bucket where we can all, you know, easily talk to each other. But like, that's super important. You know, another thing online that I wanted to bring up is like visibility. So if you, let's say you have like a profile picture and like a name and you're just like always commenting on people's um, posts, you're sharing them, um, you're on Twitter. I see this with fans. I see this with other producers as well. There are certain people that will always engage with you in a genuine way. And like, you start to remember those names. So for me, if someone's like always commenting, I kind of like, oh, you know, I know this person. If they were to ask me a question or ask something of me, at least I won't ignore them. You know, I'll have, I'm more likely because there is some kind of relationship to talk to them. And I think, you know, doing that strategy can be super helpful. You don't want to be like spammy and annoying, but you, you know, if you can like kind of like what Starry said before, like provide something like especially with social media, like the algorithms benefit from commenting, from sharing, from saving these posts. If you can engage with people's posts and repost it to your story, whatever it is, that people will remember that. They'll remember your face, they'll remember your profile picture. It's just kind of how it works, in my opinion. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think a thing I used to, I used to, I mean, I still do it every now and then. I mean, if I find a new producer who's, who's made like a super sick track, I'll just message him. And you usually just build build a relationship from that uh, because you know, what, I mean, what do you say you know, in that first message? Yeah, I, I just fucking like this track I played it last yeah. night and it's great. So yeah, good job on that. Just <laughs> Stuff like, like that. Yeah. It's yeah. Like not asking I mean, anything of them. It's just starting no, uh, that relationship. Total, totally genuine because first of all, I like the track. I like the music. So I want to get to know to the person behind it. So yeah, I think it's totally it's totally cool thing to do uh online uh another thing that i think helped me a lot uh was during the pandemic back in, or my uh, it's a year already uh, Who knows how long i got into discord i got into discord and the first like community i got in was the ernesto one uh mm -hmm. the broken english one and i got to know a lot of people uh i got to know moose uh i got to know another guy from from the us old talk we, we even did music together and then I was on this course, so I got into the kick and bass community and I was doing feedback in the community tab for the longest time. Yeah. And then I became a coach. <laughs> so but I wasn't asking for anything. I just was I was just sharing what I could and being as uh proactive as possible. And I think that's the key the key to to networking online, which yeah. is kind of what you were saying already. I think it's great with like the, you know, streaming and Twitch and like all these kind of communities and feedbacks, you know, it really provides an area for if you have like the spare time to, you know, give back. That's why we have the community feedback so that like, you know, members of Kick and Base can provide feedback for each other. And it's kind of like, a, you know, totally like free thing. But like, you know, if you're that person that's doing that and like really kind of going above and beyond, you know, other people are going to see that and like that visibility, um, especially like online, like in the, in, you know, I, I don't stream as much, but sorry, you could talk about this as well. Um, you know, you, you recognize who are the people that are coming back week after week and engaging in the chats and, you know, engaging in the conversation. And those are the people that if you really, really, really want to be in this industry, and it's like, that's your biggest dream in life and goal is to be a producer and like to know these people and work with these labels. It's like, you have to kind of match that dedication in my opinion. Yeah, I love Twitch as like a community especially when the pandemic was like full swing it was like my only community I felt like was twitch and there's people that I met on there um just other streamers and then also people that would come into my stream and chat and like there's this girl that I met who was streaming and she makes really amazing music and she would come into my chat and I'd come into her chat and I actually invited her to stay with me for like she she came to LA and stayed with me for 10 days just because we met and got along really well on Twitch and like really liked each other's music. And uh, 
yeah, it's such a good way to to connect people. And I love that Twitch is like all about these little mini communities. Um, yeah, yeah. It, and, it's, oh, I was gonna say, it's like, I've met so many people from the internet that I'd never met before. And then like met them in real life. Like, like it seems kind of weird at first, but I've done it like so much at this point that it's just like normal. And <laughs> yeah. it's like, you know, I, I have people that were like, I talked so much to like hours and hours and hours and like, you know, really like my friends and I would like tell them to my girlfriend, they're like, what do you mean? This is like, I've never met this person, you know, but it's like some of those friendships you have online can be like really strong, especially in music production. So it just kind of reminded me when you said you invited her over for 10 days. It's like, a <laughs> yeah. it's like a family member or something at that point, you know? Yeah. And I think it's great too. Like we were talking about going to festivals and going to places out of the town that you're in and like, you know, in your hometown, you're, you're a little more comfortable, you know, a few people at the party, probably. And if you go out of town and go to a festival, maybe you don't know anyone in that whole country that you're in. But the internet is a really good tool for that. So you can find you can find the discord communities that are like going to that festival, and you could maybe like meet up with some of those people in person. And, and like, I think it's a great idea to do that and to try to do that. Because when you do meet the people that are from the place that you're in, then you get more opportunities to meet other people and have it, have that like organic, like they'll introduce you and you're not just like, hi, I'm just like some random person. Do you want to hang out? It's like, at least you have someone you met online who can then introduce you as their friend. And then suddenly you like have a bunch of friends, like way faster than if you just showed up without any like of that pre stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, I think like this is an important thing is like you you kind of want to do your research as well when you're not research, but like you want to be prepared when you're going into like a networking situation like that. So like for me, you know, I try to follow as many people on social media so that at least I, you know, it sounds kind of like stalkerish, but it's like you're kind of keeping up to date with like what they're doing so that, you know, if you were to have a conversation, you kind of like know a bit of like what's going on in people's lives. And um, I think, yeah, like you said, like doing some preparation, like you know, especially for like festivals, there's always like Facebook groups, like everyone's going here, or, you know, you can put a post out on Twitter, who's going here, you know, um, there's lots of ways to do it. But like, I think the idea that you're just like, confident, and like, I'm going to go in and like, figure everything out, can backfire, like you want to be a bit prepared a bit, you know, who are the people that are going to be there that you want to meet? And, you know, how am I going to do that, that for me, as like a person that likes to plan things like that can be helpful. Yeah. And it just gives everybody a little bit love, more level of comfort with this random person yeah. who just came out of nowhere. Like if you have, if you reached out to like 10 people online who you know are in the area who are going to the festival and let's say two of them will be really nice and like, yeah, let's meet up. Like maybe the rest won't say anything or they'll be like, hey, but maybe two of them will be like, hey, I like they might just be the type of personality that just wants to make friends. And they're like, I'm going to be at the giant mushroom light up sculpture at 2 p.m. or like, you know, I'm going to yeah. go see this one opening act that there's not that many people at this stage. So maybe that'd be a good time for you to find me, you know, and then you meet that person. Chances are they have a bunch of friends because they're very <laughs> friendly. And then, <laughs> and then they'll introduce you. And then out. suddenly you're like, not the random person at all. You're like just a friend of a friend. And then you're in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about for me is that like I feel like we're, we've spoken so much about like networking and like the kind of sense of like meeting people and like these tactics but you know I think one of the best ways to network in you know the music industry is actually with like your music itself like I think that's the most powerful kind of way to open doors and to meet people is to um, and you know it's not we're not gonna be talking about how to to make music that people want to connect with you with but um, yeah like you know, that, that's the kind of glue that, that, that makes the whole industry, you know, work and stick together is, is the music, right? So, um, you know, sending your music out to people is like probably the best thing you can do. Um, I know, especially like a lot of people that throw parties or promoters, um, they're also DJs a lot of the time. Like they, you know, the amount of promoters I know that like open up their own, yeah, look, Ader's a fucking uh, DJ promoter, right? So, you know, yeah, I'm stealing, it, I'm stealing slots from uh, starting from DJs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So these guys, they, they're the ones because they're throwing the parties, they have to know, you know, what's going on in the music industry. So if they become fans of your music, 
they're going to be like, oh, this is a sick artist that, you know, maybe not that many people know about yet. I want them to come open up. Like I've seen this happen tons and tons of times. And uh, yeah, just like throughout my whole career, like music has been the number one, like door opener. Like uh, I just a few weeks ago, like Tiesto started following me on Instagram. And like, of course, for me, like, you know, Tiesto is like the go, right? Like as a little kid, I used to listen to Tiesto. So, you know, I shot him a message. I was like, thanks for the follow, man. It was like, oh yeah, I love your new song. Let me take you. Like, how did you clear the publishing? Or like, he like asked something about like one of my songs. He was like, oh, the sample is sick or something like that, right? And, you know, it, we never spoke. He doesn't know my name, blah, blah, blah. But because of like the music, like that was like our kind of conversation starter. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to send you a couple more songs. And he listened to them, blah, 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 right? So it's like the music at the end of the day is the best. So I think, you know, with all this networking, you can kind of like know everyone, but if you don't have a product that works with knowing everyone, it doesn't matter. So you need to make sure that, you know, you level up as a producer and, um, you know, kind of make the best music and the music that you want to make, because that's going to be the ultimate tool. And, uh, you know, that for me, that's like, it's always been my priorities, like have really good music, have a big network, get it out to people. But just wanted to say that. Yeah, you kind of need to do the prep work. I mean, you, you kind of need to learn how to network, get an initial network of people or close close knit to you in your community, and then when you're ready to you know, start pushing your music, you you you'll you have something to to start with. It's not like okay, I have a track. What, what am I gonna do? Who I'm gonna send it to? Yeah. So I think I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, I see a lot of people that the first thing they do they make tracks and they send out promos. They're like to hundreds of DJs and maybe some big DJ will pick it up and will play it. And that's going to be great for your, for your image, for your career, for your whatever. And so, yeah, always take the chance. I think, I yeah. think it's important. I think you also always want to be like prepared. Like, you know, if someone, let's say you were to meet someone like a nice a big DJ, they like send me some music and you just like don't have anything that's like unreleased or whatever. Like that's, you know, I, and I've been in that position where it's like, oh, I just don't really have anything at the moment. And it sucks because it feels like you had this opportunity and like you weren't able to capitalize it, capitalize on it. So, you know, I think having some cool stuff to send to people, if you're going to have a conversation with someone like that's super important. Um, like, you know, don't take a meeting with someone like an A&R for a label and then not have anything to show them or like, you know, something that you're not like super proud of. Um, yeah. Yeah, so go to some parties, meet people, but also don't go to every party, you know, stay home that if you really are inspired that Friday, Saturday night, stay in the studio and work because sometimes you won't be inspired and then you should maybe go to the party. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen a lot of people that, sorry uh, to, to cut you off, Taylor, but um, yeah, like people that kind of start to use networking as like an excuse for partying or like going to all these festivals. And like you live your life. I don't give a fuck what you do. But, um, you know, you could start lying to yourself in that situation and you're just not really networking. You're just partying and you're not really getting anything done. And like people in the industry will kind of like see that as well. Like, you know, if you're just like everywhere and you're like, why is this person everywhere? Like, what do they do? Like, you know, sometimes you're just like, but, you know, it's just weird. I don't know. I got lost in the souls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah don't be the drunkest person in the room. True. <laughs> I would say uh, the music, the reason the music is so important, especially in big cities where it's hard to network is that's how you get backstage to meet the people you need to talk to is like, you have to have some kind of way of getting access to the backstage. And that's the easiest way is music. And so that's why like with the space yacht thing, I was never pushing myself to DJ because that wasn't the goal. The goal was to, you know, build a long term and have them book me for my music, not because that was nice. Because like you want to have longevity, knowing that you're going to meet if you, there's like if you're walking around and there's a huge artist and your production's not good enough to like meet with them, it may not be the good time to meet them yet. Like maybe wait another year or two until your music's ready, where it actually matters and that connection makes sense. Yeah. So music is important. It gets you access to meet and just keep leveling up your production and keep networking with that level. Like don't reach for the stars initially because it's just gonna. This is going to get slapped back in your face, like, to be honest, like it, has, it goes back to like that <laughs> yeah, first impression good. thing timing. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Timing is so important because, you know, 
especially like for me, like, you know, a big thing as a producer and artist is like, once you get to a certain level, you want to start to get like an agent and you want to start to get like a, a manager that works on music full time. And, you know, a lot of times you may think you're at a level, but you're not really at that level. So, you know, burning, I wouldn't say burning that bridge, but like going for that connection, like a little bit too early, um, you know, always want to shoot your shot, but sometimes you want to be a little more calculated and, you know, am I really at this level where trying to meet this agent and showing them my music, but I only have 300 followers on Instagram or whatever it is, you know, a lot of times you have to realize like that these people in these roles, they run a business, right? It's not just about, you know, having cool music and cool artists and people that are good at Ableton do things, right? Like they, they run a business. So you have to kind of understand that um, money needs to be made and, you know, there's a whole business going on. So you, you, when you network, just keep that in the back of your mind as well. Um, that, that's why I think doing it with producers and DJs is easier because it's more about the art. There's, it's less about, you know, playing this track is going to make me more money or anything like that. It's more of like, oh, I actually like the, the art of this versus someone where like a promoter, an agent, where it's like, I would love to book you, but you just don't sell enough tickets. It's a kind of different conversation. So, you know, set your expectations. Um, and yeah, timing is everything here. Yeah, but you can also still meet those people and become friends with them and then exactly. also ask them about what they do because this is some advice. I, I went to, uh, I actually have a bachelor's in music industry <laughs> from USC. Before I before I uh, decided to focus on mu my music, I went to school for music industry thinking- that I have, a, I have a bachelor's in after parties to be honest. With. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. And one of the things they're very, they focused on networking a lot. And one of the things that they said is like, let's say you want to work at like a label or you want to work wherever it is, whatever your intention is. If you just like talk to someone and be like, Hey, I would like to schedule a meeting with you or schedule a call or get together for a coffee. And just, I would love to like basically interview you. Essentially you don't have to necessarily do go all the way with that, but talking to people about what they do and like like I did a call with this guy the other day who is the CEO of Merlin and I didn't even really I kind of thought I knew what Merlin did but I, I didn't really and I was just like I just want to pick your brain because I did I was genuinely curious and then it's like then you get to kind of just talk about what someone does and and people like talking about themselves and they like being asked questions about themselves so even if you just meet someone at you know behind the stage somewhere and it's like you kind of know who they are but you just want to ask about like what are they working on and you know people like that subject the most so you can always rely on that one <laughs> I love talking about myself so when people ask me <laughs> questions about something and that's why I said like do your research a little bit as well like you know if someone starts comes up to me and like they're like start telling me like a fishing story or something I'll like immediately get locked in because I fucking love fishing right and so it's like they kind of like follow me on Instagram they know that I post about fishing all the time and then I'm already like have a connection, you know, so it's like do that research. And yeah, I think I may have like scared people off where it's like, don't talk to a promoter unless you can like sell the tickets. You know, you still want to have that genuine friendship. You just don't want to be asking for something really or expect that to kind of come out of it. Um, yeah. For them to remember you if it's like a quick thing, I guess, too. I, I think I th you have to make a genuine connection. So don't yeah. be don't overreach, I guess, that's the thing, because like. I guess what I was thinking when I said what I said was like at a festival. If I'm like at a festival, like I, this last weekend, I saw AC Slater and the girl I was with was like, when you go talk to him, it's like, it's a lot cooler if I have someone introduce me to him because I'm not, you know, at yeah. that level. Like, hey, dude, I'm Zenlo. I'd be like, who? You know, that would just be <laughs> embarrassing. Whereas right? so if I have someone be like, yo, this is Zenlo, he already has that respect. So yeah. like that, that was in my head. That's why I was thinking like, it's not smart for me to run over there. Whereas like if I get introduced later, it's better. So like, I think, yeah, genuine connections. Like there's people like Dr. Fresh. I know, for example, who's this way, like Tony will fuck with anyone. It don't matter how nice. big or is. So he will remember you. Those type of people go talk to him. He will talk to everyone, remember you no matter who you are. So like, that's like networking. That's like, as an artist, that's who you want to be like. It's just like someone who everyone's just like, wants is your friend. Yeah. So like, but to be honest, like, I'm really good at faces, terrible at names. So there's a lot of people I've met in Chicago or wherever. They're like, yo, dude, I remember you 2018. It's like, yeah, like, I don't remember you, but like, that's sick. And I'm not going to tell them I don't remember them, obviously. Yeah. But like, that's just the honest <laughs> truth. Like, if you have to like get that connection or get memory or like keep the connection, but not in like a 
draining way. Don't ask for shit. Like, keep their friendship. Sometimes, like, I've definitely, like, cold went up to people before and, like, just gotten, like, a kind of, like, mugged off, like, reaction where they're, like, oh, cool. Like, they don't give it, you know, don't really care about what, what you have to say. And, um, yeah, like, some people are way more positive. And, you know, like you said, like, Dr. Fresh, he's a great example. Like, doesn't matter who you are, he'll be, like, super nice when he talks to you and, you know, give you the time to say what you want to say. Some people aren't. And uh, that's just the way things goes. But, like, that's why I said, like, music is so important because... That doesn't mean that like now that relationship with that person's like over maybe they're just you know for whatever reason um at that moment didn't want to talk to you it's like if you have like something that's undeniable like your music is just so good or you know you built the, a really good like artist profile like that doesn't matter at the end of the day people the business is going to want a part of you kind of and you know it's just like another way to kind of look at these relationships yeah totally we didn't touch up on labels and a and r's i think yeah. not much at least like it would be nice to to see what's your special trick about that is <laughs> yeah I, with labels I, i can start off just like uh with my background and you know if you guys are interested the last episode we did an interview with nick Kaysen, who's the uh oh, yeah. or nick summers his artist name is Kaysen, who's the kind of like label manager a and r for repopulate mars so if you want to like have a more in-depth conversation i would check out episode four But yeah, like I've never really like cold sent, maybe a few times I've cold sent demos to a label. Um, like I think Dirty Bird I originally did and maybe a few others, but I always try to like know who the person is that's running a label and like reach out to them on social media, add them as a friend on Facebook, like something, because, you know, it's way better to text someone a link to your track um, when you want to do it rather than like go through a demo submission where there's going to be thousands of other submissions and it's just like very not personable. So it's, it's always good to try to find, you know, just like we said with all these other people in the industry, find who are the people that run the labels that you want to be on. Um, ask them, you know, the best question, if you don't know them at all is, Hey, I love what you do for this label. Where is the best place for me to send music? Because then they're going to either give you an email or they're going to say, send it here. And then you have, At least they know your name. They've seen your name on an inbox. They've seen it on social media handle. And you can kind of then it's not, you're not totally random at that point. And that's like a very neutral kind of question. But yeah, that's just my experience with networking with labels. Yeah. Isn't it gonna look like you didn't do your research and you just went to him? Just you, for what? You're like, where should I send the demo? Dude, there is like a link in the profile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is it maybe... gonna be weird? kind of but for i mean like people ask me this all the time for like promo and like yeah i have it up on certain places but i just yeah. know that some people you know want to be direct about something and i'm not like you know you know yeah. you should have like looked here blah 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 sometimes i feel like that but it's just my, also, my opinion yeah you can yeah, also yeah, be no, like is just... this the right place like you could confirm you're like i saw this uh, email is this that's the right a good place one. to send <laughs> Because yeah. then you can also check, I, I've done that before just to check if they're even paying any attention at all, because then, so, you know, let's say you craft this long email specifically to this label, specifically for that email. And like, if they can't even respond to be like, yes, send it here, then you probably shouldn't spend all the time crafting some beautiful email to that yeah, probably. address. Yeah, you're kind of like testing the waters on like whether that would work, you know. Yeah, I think I'm I super like weird with that. Because I, when, when, when people come to me for, for, to send demos to my level, I'm like, no, dude, don't send it here, please. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm super disorganized, so I need to have the demos all on my, on my like, demo portal. And if they're not there, I'm going to lose them. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah. But, I'm the yeah. old bull in this. I guess for some, for some labels, though, like, you know, getting that personal connection can be like, super important because yeah. really otherwise it's like, Yeah, and I, I, you know, that that's like the lowest common denominator. I think like trying to like befriend these people or recognize them at a show or something like that, it's just like anyone else, like that is going to be way better for your music in the long run. The thing that you want to also keep in mind is that just because you're not like you're friends with someone that runs a label, like I've had my music rejected lots of times from people that I'm friends with. And, you know, you can't expect that just be, you know, just because that connection is there that they're going to be like, oh, I love the music, you know, a lot of times that doesn't matter. And there's a lot of times that the music that does best is from people that they don't know and they got a random email as well. So it's not like, you know, I don't, I don't want you as the listener, as a if you're a producer to be like, oh, my music's never going to get signed unless I know Claude Von Stroke, Dirty Bird's never going to sign it. Like, that's not the case at all. I would say most of the times they do like to 
pick up music from undiscovered people that they don't have any connection with. Yeah, I I will say how I got started was uh, just cold emailing the labels through the links. It's till I got um, on a label, and then from there, artists run labels that like the music. Like artists, uh, like Golf Clap was one of the first ones that reached out to me. Like, yo, like your music, send more. We also run a label too called Country Club Disco. I was like, okay. Um, so that's how I got a lot of my stuff um, out there too. Is just like once the music's out there, if it's unique and creative and creates attention, you're gonna get reached out. Like Tyler's music, West End's. Now he hasn't submitted a lot because people are reaching out and be like, yo, your music's sick. We want to sign your music. It's so much easier once you get going. That first like few labels is so hard though. So that's like meet people and just like keep submitting until you get one or two like somewhat like a uh, notable label support and then it gets easier and easier and easier yeah sure. those responses are difficult <laughs> everyone everyone in the music industry is kind of lazy like you know if they see someone else doing something and you know kind of signing records from this artist people yeah, everyone else is going to come in and be like i want a record from this artist you see it all the time so uh yeah like i think you're totally right once you get something going uh it makes it easier but yeah i think that's a good place to kind of like wrap up i feel like you know there's more than enough that people can take from this conversation and network um, and go do that. But yeah, if you're in LA, well, I guess this is not going to go up, but I'm doing house heads tonight, which is kind of like space. Yeah. It's like a free party. So, you know, that's a great example of like something to come out to and, you know, meet people and stuff at, but yeah, I would say start local, go online, do it, and then kind of, you know, take it, take it bigger from there. What were the other conclusions we had? Be nice, always be nice. Don't ask for too much. Does anyone else remember? I can't remember. Don't be pushy. Don't name drop. Don't, yeah, don't name, name drop. <laughs> don't call a big artist by their uh, their first name unless you know them personally. There's like a whole meme about Skrillex with that. Like, oh, you mean oh, Sunny? Oh, my mate Sunny. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, fuck you guys. So yeah, this is episode five of the Kick and Bass podcast on networking. We're missing a few coaches, but all good. Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys for episode six. Peace. Let's go. Bye.